Well, after months of waiting, jobs lost, and millions in revenue out the window, some welcome news tonight for New York City restaurateurs. Indoor dining is making a comeback at the end of the month, September 30th. But not everything is back on the table. Capacity is going to be capped at 25%. Bar service will still be a no-no. Temperature checks, masks, air filters, even diners' contact information required. News for Andrew Siff live with how this is going to be enforced and when more restrictions could be lifted, Andrew. Right, Natalie and Chuck, this has been the talk of the town for weeks. It, as New York's recovery has continued, the one glaring thing that has been off limits is indoor dining. Now, as you indicated, it will be back at the end of this month with some pretty strict regulations. An outdoor lunch in September is one thing, but when it gets cold, today New Yorkers learned they can eat inside next month. Listen, there are risks in everyday life, whatever we do, whatever we take. And as long as the restaurants take the correct protocols, I'm very comfortable with it. Restaurant manager Joe Canizzo watched Governor Cuomo's announcement. No bar service. And nodded along with restrictions he anticipated. Starting September 30th, restaurants can open at 25% capacity with temperature checks at the door. Diners provide their phone number for contact tracing. You can't sit at the bar and must wear masks except at the table. You're talking about maybe bringing in more staff just to fulfill some of these requirements. For weeks, Governor Cuomo sent his state liquor authority to crack down on bars for shoddy compliance with social distancing. But when Cuomo refused to open city eateries, citing similar compliance issues, some restaurants planned a lawsuit. And today the governor said, in essence, customers will police themselves. New Yorkers will keep New Yorkers safe. Earlier today, I asked the mayor about what he had to promise the state in terms of enforcing the rules. How close are you to announcing an enforcement and compliance plan for indoor dining? Uh, Andrew, a lot of conversations over the last few days between my office and the governor's office. Everyone is working together trying to figure out what's safe. One topic of conversation, what to do if COVID transmission goes up. If the infection rate goes up, bang, hit the pause button. While if it stays low for one more month. We can always reassess the guidelines and go from 25% to 50% would be the next increase. So the key threshold is November 1st. That's the date Governor Cuomo says restaurants could go to 50% capacity. And by the way, that lawsuit led by Assemblywoman Nicole Maliataka is still moving forward, arguing it's not fair that the rest of the state has 50% capacity while New York City restaurants begin at 25%. We're live on the east side. Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. All right, Andrew, thanks for the latest there. While well, the start of school is less than three weeks away now, and New York City education officials are already notifying employees at two Brooklyn schools about two staffers who tested positive for COVID. Now, the DOE says the positive tests are connected to PS1 and MS88. At least one person infected is a teacher. Also, Mayor de Blasio says once school starts, bus service will be available for 100,000 students. And more schools have passed COVID safety inspections. We told you just a few days ago that 10 buildings had failed inspection. Today, the city says four of those buildings got the repairs needed to pass. Well, it's good that you've noticed it, but it's another muggy day out there, and we're tracking some storms heading our way tonight. But uh, Janice, I, I guess behind the storms, we have some relief coming, right? Absolutely, Chuck. We've got some drier air coming in, some cooler temperatures. It'll feel like fall uh, coming up part of the weekend. Right now, those live storm tracker four is picking up on some light rain showers and sprinkles out on the east end, coastal Connecticut. Otherwise, it's been a dry day despite all the cloud cover around the tri state. But we're slowly but surely going to see that tropical moisture uh, swinging up to the north. And a cold front dropping to the south. We have a flash flood watch already in place for Thursday for central New Jersey counties. Edison, Belmar, over towards Trenton and Clinton. Uh, that's where you could see some flash flooding, some of the heaviest rain expected there. In terms of the city right now, it's just cloudy and 78 degrees in Central Park, but we do anticipate an increase in the showers later tonight. By 11 p.m., we might have a few sprinkles around, but then as we go into the overnight, some thunderstorms may pop up and spring up around the area. 
area going into tomorrow morning and we'll track more of that chance for rain as well as the weekend cool down coming up in a few minutes back to you. All right, Janice, thank you. Well, on the Upper West Side, a death investigation inside a homeless hotel that's been the center of residents' complaints for months now. Well, now the hundreds who were housed there are moving out. And News Force Miles Miller is live on the Upper West Side with the reason that this is now sparking some new criticism. Miles. Well, it's sparking criticism because this decision to close this homeless hotel shelter only came after residents threatened to sue. Roberto Mangual is homeless and lives here at the Belclair Hotel, temporary lodging paid for by the city to stop the spread of the coronavirus in the packed shelter where he once lived. I look at the Belclair like an opportunity. I've come from an environment where they jam-packed 230 men into a dorm-style um, facility. Last night, the city announced nearly 300 men, temporarily housed at the Lucerne Hotel on the Upper West Side, were being transferred back to shelters. He now fears he's next. I woke up this morning to Twitter and some of the residents from the Upper West Side saying it's about time move these crackheads out of our communities. And if he if that's the message that he wants to back, then that's just de Blasio giving a thumbs up and supporting the hate that's going on on the streets of the Upper West Side. We want to always be um, focused on what's healthy and safe for the community and for folks who are homeless. God bless you and thank you everyone. This morning outside the Lucerne, nearby residents outraged by the city's quick decision to displace the residents. Do you know what it's like to be uprooted from where you are at a minute's notice? The entire impetus originally at the height of the coronavirus was to get people out of more crowded facilities into other environments. But the height of the coronavirus, thank God, is long behind us. This neighborhood is largely divided on why the homeless shouldn't be housed in hotel shelters. Hotels like this are not appropriate for people to receive the services that they need. But for those who live in them, they say their concerns are not being considered. We come to DHS to, to seek help for stability to get our own homes once again. And the city says those who live here will be moved out over the next two weeks. Live on the Upper West Side, I'm Miles Miller, News 4 New York. All right, Miles, thank you. Well, this year's 47th annual Village Halloween Parade has been canceled. A parade organizer tells News 4 that COVID concerns made it impossible to safely bring the crowds to 6th Avenue this year. That parade was supposed to feature hundreds of puppets, 53 bands, lots of dancers, artists, costume New Yorkers, as you see in the video from previous years. Organizers tell us they are planning a small scale pop up event instead. Well, in New Jersey, Governor Murphy confirmed late today that trick or treating is still a go in the Garden State. He was asked about it at an event in Patterson. He did say there will likely be some changes, but didn't provide details. Today, Los Angeles County in California canceled trick or treating and any large Halloween festivals.